So I think, uh, let me start with a quick re recap on the alerting feature. So as already said by Ronit, uh, in the alerting offering, we first of all started to allow the users to define a static threshold rule. So we basically, depending on the rule threshold, divide a rule into static threshold or dynamic threshold. So the very first offering was to sort of uh, define a rule saying that a metric is greater than some fixed value, right, over a given period. And that's when you uh, get the alert. So this, this had some problems. While this works and uh, solves a lot of problems, this had some problems, you know, wherein you have to guess a good value for the RHS of the rule, right? So to solve this, the best way was to, you know, send you out anomalies in true sense. So an anomaly is basically something you know, where a metric data is uh, differing from its peers in a given uh, range of time, okay? So to find out that, there are different ways to calculate a baseline, right? So you look at a window of metric data and sort of calculate a singular value from it, which replaces your threshold from the static threshold condition. So yeah, uh, that, that is what I'm going to uh, talk about now. And also the another feature that we have sort of added is to allow variable rule duration. So the last time what we discussed about was looking at looking at only the last minute of data in a moving fashion, right? Now we allow allow the users to look at say the last X minutes of data or last X period of data. It could be say X seconds of data, right? So that allows you to, you know, uh, configure what is a good period for you to uh, get an alert and be able to really control the noise that the noise or say uh, the silence that the alerting system could probably create. Okay, so yeah. So uh, let me first talk about the configurations, the new configurations that we have defined. So this is my hypertrace set setup, which is running locally. You could very well, you know, use our hypertrace images, hypertrace Docker Compose setup, and quickly try this out. So uh, earlier, earlier we have we had a static threshold condition which required a bunch of configurations, like what would be the right hand side value, the static threshold value, what would be the operator, and all of that. So with the baseline uh, threshold condition, you don't have to define anything. You just have to give us a value, which is the amount of data that the rule is supposed to look at. So for for example, in this rule, I'm expecting a value called PT5M. This is the ISO uh, standard for defining a duration. So basically in this rule, I'll be looking at five minutes of metric data, right? At every point, looking at five minutes of metric data from the given T, right? And the rule duration, this is another variable. This applies to both the static and baseline rules. So this is the amount of data that I will consider for comparison with either the static threshold or the dynamic threshold, all right? So let's see this, like how, how these results actually result into a, a violation. So, yeah. So, okay, uh, also quickly, uh, let me give a recap of the other portions of the rule. So uh, we have got a rule ID, a rule name. These are like simple metadata, which will help you identify the alerts when it comes and correlate in the hypertrace platform. So we define a metric selection. This is a way for you to identify, to pinpoint a metric in our platform. There could be multiple metrics. And as you know, Hypertrace is a like entity first model. So every metric is under some entity. So here I am defining a, an alert on the service entity type. And these filter conditions will let me identify the particular entity and the particular metric type on which I am interested in con uh, receiving an alert for. And also, uh, this is of interest, these two values. So a, a metric that we stored has multiple function types associated with it, right? Uh, so, so metric data is actually a pinpoint, a point data in, in our timeline, right? But uh, probably you do not look at that point data in the timeline. You uh, aggregate the metric using some functions and look at some uh, a, 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 little, at a little higher granularity. So for example, here I am asking the system to look at uh, metric data which are clubbed together by the sum function at a one minute granularity, right? I could very well use 15 second granularity or a one second granularity, right? So, so yeah. 
This is the customer service in the Hypertrace platform. I'm running the hot rod application, monitoring the hot rod application with Hypertrace. This is the customer uh, uh, service in that application. And I had reported some metric data. And if you see, I am seeing this call counts metric at one minute granularity. And these are the values. So if you see at 744, the value is 12. So if you see, if you look at some other granularity, let's say 15 seconds, you will see smaller buckets, right? But if I look at a granularity of one minute, because I have configured a rule at one minute granularity. Uh, so if you see the values are now clubbed and the bars are wider. So at 744 minutes, uh, uh, the value was 12. Then the value was 27, 56, 82. Okay. So let me show you the corresponding alerts and we'll try to correlate that alert with the, these values. Okay. So yeah. These are the notifications that I have received. And I have purposefully tried to, you know, uh, for demonstration purpose, try to create such values which will alert me at every minute. So the first alert that I got was at 747. Okay. So if you see at 747, the rule that I have configured is looking at five minutes of baseline data and two minutes of rule data, right? Or of uh, the metric data for evaluating the, uh, actually evaluating the rule. So it looked at 746 and 745, which was empty. And the baseline was calculated using data starting from 744 to 739, the five minute. This, if you see a window here, so the baseline will be calculated using 744 to 739. And the rule that the data that will be used for comparison with that baseline will start from 746 to 745. So if you see here, the baseline calculated was 12 because there is just one bucket here which is value of 12 and my rule value is 27 and that was more than my baseline so it violated right and this is good see here you didn't have to uh, put any static threshold right you automatically received that because the fact that your baseline was being violated you received an alert okay now let's move to 748 so at 7 748 i look the system will look at the metric data of 747 and 746 and still the baseline calculation will start from 745 to now 740, right? So again, there was just one data contributing to the baseline value and two data now, if you see, two data now contributing to the uh, LHS part of the rule, the one that were used to uh, look for violations, right? So again, I have a violation. At 749, things get a bit more interesting. So at 749, at seven, okay, where am I? I'm also getting a bit lost in this time series calculation. So uh, I think we were looking at the minute 748. So for 748, we will consider 746 and 740, 747 and 746 and calculate the baseline starting from 745, which was obviously a violation. Let's move to 749. So at 749, I will consider 748 and 747. Now the baseline calculation starts from this minute onwards, 746 to 741. So this value of 12 and 27 contribute to the baseline. And you, as you see, the baseline value has changed, right? So it has changed from being a single value 12 to a range 0 to 40.7. Uh, why? Because the, met, the baseline function that we use is uh, median plus two standard deviations and median minus two standard deviations. This is a bound that we are creating. So obviously the standard deviation now is positive and that's leading to a lower bound of zero and a lower bound could, would probably be in negative value, but we have rounded it off to zero because metric data won't, would never be negative and the positive value of 40. And of course, we are considering again, to, uh, we, the system got two metric data points to compare. So these two minutes. So yeah. Again, if you see at 750, so at 750, although there is no data point, but the window considers two minutes, 748 and 749. 749, there was no data point, but 740 contributed in the rule LHS part. And the baseline was calculated using th these three data points, right? So if you see the baseline has increased now from being 40, the higher value from being 40 to 71, but still our value is 82 at this point of time. Right, which is more than our baseline and there is a rule violation. So see, this is a beautiful way where you can see, right? Uh, the values are increasing, still you are receiving a, a, because had the values, you know, saturated, right? Or, or came down, or actually if, if it would have saturated, then you wouldn't have received any alerts, 
because now the system has learned that okay this is the new normal but had it gone down then again there would be alert because the system now is saying that okay there is a problem your baseline baseline is being breached and um, so this is a good way i mean capturing it with a static threshold would also be uh, possible but that would need much more curation and efforts um on on the side of the uh, users yeah so yeah that's it i think and uh, more enhancements will uh, continue to come in uh, in the alerting feature and of course all of the platform will come together in this way yeah and thank you guys this was rishabh